All right, welcome back to Perdido Key Gaming. It's uh, about 100 degrees outside. No, I'm exaggerating. 99 degrees in uh, in uh, Tampa, I understand. Anyway, so you can't, <laughs> you really can't talk about role playing games and things like that without bringing in um, an old company. Uh, I believe that they got resurrected recently and everything like that but you yeah you can't talk about role-playing games without bringing up fantasy games unlimited uh, you know this this particular one is the uh, I believe first uh, first edition well second edition chivalry and sorcery this is the 83 version the original came out in 77 and uh, but uh, they came out with several several role playing games, and being a little you know ASD myself, you know I like rules and lists and stuff like that, and you know you, uh, in my opinion, you know, you should have a rule to cover everything. But you know I've kind of grown away from that with uh, you know gaming, you know don't roll for everything, but. In the case of Fantasy Games Unlimited, you know they they all their games were you know almost the same, uh, not not the same, but of similar complexity and everything like that. So, the Chivalry and Sorcery they had um, uh, you know Bushido, which was a role-playing game set in um, in uh, you know Japan uh, or Oriental setting and everything like that. Uh, and of course, space opera. Um, there was a lot of stuff out there for space opera, um, and it, you know these pretty substantial rule books. Uh, fantasy game. They had a, their superhero games uh, game, villains and vigilantes. Um, revised rules. You know, uh, this is another part of the uh, chivalry and sorcery uh, set, along with you know the source book. Um, for chivalry and sorcery, the other part of uh, you know uh, space opera there, and I can't. I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. The Flashing Blades role-playing game. It's somewhere around here, but um, you know this one in particular was pretty much just um, straight up. There's no magic involved or anything like that. There's no magic. Uh, you know, obviously set in you know the style of the Three Musketeers and. Uh, the man uh, in the Iron Mask was that it? you know those those type of stories you know, but chivalry all of them were all of them are really complex. <laughs> the uh, you know uh, I don't know how to describe it, but chivalry and sorcery didn't have too much magic in it, um, although they had you know swords and sorcery. Bushido of course had some magic in it. But the uh, character generation and, I mean, the print is tiny um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, looks like hopefully a coffee stain, you know, there, everything um, was, I mean, there was, there was a rule for everything. So you get, uh, you know, your character generates his sign and, uh, you know, decides, you know, you you roll to see what your father was and how much money, you know, income you're going to have and everything like that. And, uh, you know, how much you're going to get paid being of a certain profession. Um, you know, there's just, there. I mean, rules for everything. A height, you know, complex height generator. Uh, they had, you know, various races, dwarves, kobolds. Um, humans, uh, halflings, of course, orcs, uh, mountain trolls, um, things like that, elves, naturally, of course. Um, what would you do without elves? But uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, insanely, you know, complex, and it, it came behind Dungeons and Dragons, which may have been the, you know, the entire point was to make a more complex Dungeons and Dragons game, style game, but. Um, when you had your simple ones, tunnels and trolls, Dungeons and Dragons, and then, you know, chivalry and sorcery was, uh, you know, 
pretty high end. Matter of fact, if you uh, when you went to generate a character, well, you better pack a lunch because you're going to be there all day. It, 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 in, I mean, it could take one entire session just to generate uh, a character. Um, and it's kind of the same same thing with Role Master. I mean, you uh, you set aside one session for Role Master, Chivalry and Sorcery, uh, Bushido, or Space Opera, or Villains and Vigilantes just to create a character because the the character creation system was, you know, extremely involved. So, you know, that's, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, the, the game's complex, you know. Uh, villains and Vigilantes, of course, uh, you know, you had powers. And it wasn't uh, like uh, Champions. Champions, you had a set number of points, and you would, or it's still around. So you have, you have a set number of points, and you, you build your character around the points. Um, in the case of, you know, Villains and Vigilantes, you're pretty much going to roll up all your, all your powers and, uh, you know, you try to figure out what your character does around that, you know, so. But, um, you know, again, same, same small print, um, same complexity, uh, as Chivalry and Sorcery. Same rule sets, uh, you know. Here's a, here's something to help you, you know, uh, generate an adventure. You know, but um, and there was, you know, there was materials out there for villains and vigilantes, a number of scenarios and things like that. And uh, I think it showed up in a couple of, you know, Dragon Magazine. They had the rules, the old, uh, you know, Green Dragon from Somerville, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, the one that was the most complex, and you know, I played it a couple of times, but it was just so slow. Space Opera was just so slow to, you know, uh, everybody wants to play at a, you know, in a in a game where things are go fast and it's not complicated or anything like that. But in the case of Space Opera or any of these for the ma that matter. Uh, you would, you know, most of the time you're you're at a gaming session or something, and you roll, you're you're in a combat. Well, it's gonna be a long time. So, but uh, you know, space opera, they they had uh, rules. Uh, they had three books in the in the set. You know, you had volume one, volume two. Then there was a whole uh, book full of equipment, and uh, you know, the amount of you know, equipment that there was, um, you know, how many, how many guns do you need? But, um, hey, you know, everybody likes a little variety and, uh, you know, being able to kit out your guy with whatever you want and build, yeah, I tried to build a spaceship according to their, uh, their rules once. Yeah, it, it took forever. And, you know, they got, uh, got rules for space combat. Of course, you gotta have rules for space combat. Um, and you know, they, <laughs> rules for generating star systems and uh, how much money uh, can be traded and for uh, you know how much money you could make just basically flying your ship around and as a merchant or something like that. That's uh, you know, that's that's pretty complex. Uh, flashing blades, like I said, was pretty much the same sort of thing. You know, this is the adventure book. Um, and uh, most of it's uh, based on, you know, well, you know, that sort of three musketeers, four musketeers type thing, you know. Uh, so, yeah, there's another game behind there. But the, anyway, what the, oh, and Bushido, that one's, uh, you know, played it a couple of times, same genre, same sort of thing. But n I don't think any of the rules between any of these games were transferable. I mean, they all had their own combat systems. They all had their own magic systems and things like that. But all of them were of the same complexity. Anyway, uh, that's you know a little bit about Fantasy Games Unlimited. If you're interested in you know extremely complex games and things like that by Fantasy Games Unlimited, you know like Chivalry and Sorcery, you know uh, take a look. You know. Uh, Throw them into a search engine, see if you can find, 
what they're up to now. I believe they, like I said, they have been re resurrected. And uh, the, um, the games are still out there. You probably find them on eBay. Anyway, uh, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, give me some feedback in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, like, uh, like I said before, have a great day. Um, have a better week. And we'll see you on the flip side.